Welcome to the Lee Navigation Canal at the Olympic Park. This is the story of the Lee Navigation Canal, which runs across one of the most socially, architecturally and historically diverse parts of London. The canal has two sides. Um, on the east, there's the legacy neighbourhoods, which are still being built around the Olympic Park and the permanent venues, such as this one um, in here east. To the west, there's two existing neighbourhoods, Hackney Wick and Fish Island, which really went through rapid transformation, which was really accelerated by the Olympic Games. We always thought about the canal as a shared common space between both sides of the canal. And we did that by building physical bridges, physical connections that allow people to access both sides. And we also did it by creating a string of what we called places of exchange, public spaces and social infrastructure like schools that is really built on the edge of the canal that then allows both sides to enjoy it and have access to those amenities. The bridge behind me, which connects Gainsborough School on the west side with a playing field that it uses on the east side as part of the legacy, which it also shares with Mossbourne Academy, which is in one of two new primary schools along the length of the canal. And that's just one example where we're actually creating amenities for both sides of the canal. So we're now coming up to Hackney Wick, which is a really important location, not only for this bit of the canal, but also for this bit of the Olympic Park. We decided that what was really important was that the new neighbourhoods on the Olympic Park were each connected to a town centre in the existing neighbourhoods around. And in this instance, what that meant was a new town centre was needed to be created at Hackney Wick um, around the existing station. Quite early on, we realised that Hackney Wick was a very special place and actually the ways in which it was different from somewhere like Stratford or even Leighton just down the road was really where its value lay. And it was really important to make sure that we hung on to that with the changes and the developments that were going to happen. So this is a project that we call Street Interrupted, working with Muff and Jane L. Gibbons, the consultant team. We came up with an idea of how to create a new public space for Hackney Wick, which connected all the way across the park ultimately to Leighton on the other side, um, but in such a way that felt very um, authentic to the character and the streets of Hackney Wick. So rather than creating a normal plaza, we just planted a huge tree in the middle of the road and blocked it off with benches. We're standing on the Greenway as it crosses the Lee Navigation Canal. And this is an amazing spot um, because you can actually see the wild character of the canal as it was before the games. But you can also see um, in the background the energy center and the Olympic legacy bridges that were constructed to connect both sides. So learning from the fine grain of Hackney Wick uh, and Fish Island. And also a big part of the work was to try and build those physical bridges. Mm. Uh, and there's four along this stretch of the canal that were delivered by um, the legacy after the games, connecting the, the legacy development with the surrounding neighbourhoods. What I find really fascinating standing here today is that the public sector has essentially unlocked this part of East London. Um, it's had an absolutely integral role to the changes that have happened here, but in very, very different ways. On the Olympic park itself, of course, the public sector acquired all the land and uh, delivered all of the infrastructure in one fell swoop for the, for the games and that momentum enabled that to happen. But on the other side, on Hackney Wick and Fish Island, by using planning powers, um, 
arguably the public sector had almost as much involvement, but trying to steer each of the piecemeal individual developments so that together they kind of formed a coherent whole, which still had some of the special qualities um, that we all sort of enjoyed about the area and, and is still there today. Because these things happened so quickly, relatively speaking, for London regeneration, normally this would have taken at least a generation, we can actually now um, almost uh, get a sense of what's been successful and what hasn't been successful and learn lessons which I think are being now fed into the future phases of not only the development of the Olympic Park but also other bits of the Lee Valley that you can see are starting to come forward up and down the canal as, as you travel along it. I mean that's one of the things that makes me feel like we've really created a proper piece of London here because it's never going to be finished and that's a sign of a, a, a real bit of city that it's constantly changing and evolving.